YouTube. Uh, my name is Izzy, Israel. Call me the Izzy One. Uh, this video is about a dirty evaporator coil in a walk in cooler. This particular coil pulls air in up through the center and discharges it out the side. So the dirty evaporator coil is actually on the inside, on the inlet surface, where we cannot see it from here. It's only accessible. When you look at it, all you see is that, which looks clean. But, I promise you, it's not clean. This video is going to be how I do it. This is not a how-to video, um, and it's definitely not um, to advise you to try to do this on your own. If you don't know what you're doing, call a professional. Um, I'm a professional. I've been doing this every day for 15 years. Um, it's going to look easy the way I do it. But that does not mean it will be easy for you if, if you've never done this before. So, um, we're going to get started. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to make a coil, walk-in cooler coil that looks like this on the inside. You cannot see this from the outside. So this is on the inside. See how dirty that is? That's one side. To make it look, well, like this. This is halfway in the process of cleaning. This is with chemical. This is still not with chemical. So, that's what we're gonna do. I've already gotten started, but that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take y'all all the way through it, watch. Okay, so starting on, uh, next, on the next side, where we have already done the other side, we need to first start by spraying all this with, uh, with hot water and a water hose. Now before you do that, you need to make sure that you put uh, these, I, what I did, I took 44 gallon trash bags, trash bags that they had here at the restaurant, and I cut them uh, at the bottom to cut the seams, and then I cut them uh, around the circle. That way I could stretch them out into flat sheets. So that's one trash bag, that's another one, and then that's another one, that's another one. So that gets us complete protection on our food. So we got food. So we got food back here. So we gotta watch out for that. So uh, I kind of started this video in the middle. So sorry about that. It's my first video. So um, if you like it, go ahead and subscribe. That'd be awesome. I got a bunch more good ones coming up for you. So once you've got it bagged off or plastic covered on both sides with some tape, something to hold it, whatever, to protect the food, you get your hot water hose. You gotta run your water. I got a water hose, see, going all the way back to where their water supply is. You do that, and then uh, run some hot water, and hot water is going to be your best friend on this. That's all you need, hot water and some coil cleaner and a few tools and some time. So, I've already did this side over here. So, this one right here, I, I, I rinsed with water first. And then I got a coil cleaner on it now. It's been sitting on it for a little while. It's, it's the, the good coil cleaner, the one that doesn't hurt nothing. So then you just, uh, you know, you come back through and you spray it. And then when you do that, the water's going to drip out over here. You've got to make sure you have a pan down there to catch it, any kind of pan. I'm using one of their trash cans that they had here. So you got to do that. And uh, my pan's kind of getting full. As you can see, I'm going to have to dump it here in a minute. But uh, you, you gotta be careful not to spray too hard or to come out the other side. See? See, it comes out the other side when I spray too hard. See that? So you just gotta lightly kind of spray. Lightly spray. And, uh, and just get all that stuff off. Now this is after letting the chemical sit on there for like maybe 10 minutes or something. And I mean, you could spray, for, you could literally spray for hours and you'd still keep getting dirty water coming out. I'm gonna have to stop there on that one because my bucket's about full. Okay guys, I'm back. So, uh, I went and dumped my water. So you can see I pretty much got two fresh cans down there. You gotta position them right under where it's gonna fall. The water's gonna fall at. So, this quadrant, it's got four quadrants. One, two, three, and four. Four quadrants, so first quadrant's done. Cleaned and rinsed. Look at that. Looks fabulous. A lot better than this. Don't you think? Yep, yep. Okay, so this has been rinsed with hot water. Rinsed pretty good. So we're gonna apply chemical. This is the chemical we're using. 
I got four cans of this, one for each quadrant should do it. And here we go. So you want to go nice and smooth, nice and even. It ain't going to hurt if you get that little sensing bulb wet. That's the, uh, that's the sensing bulb for uh, temperature control. It ain't going to hurt nothing. Sorry, I'm trying to do my video well. I'm not a good video shooter yet. I will be though. This month, I will be. So you just go back and forth, nice and even, like so. You know, nothing too special. It ain't rocket science. Nice and simple. And get her done, just like so. You want to make sure you get it nice and. Uh, you can shake the can sometimes too. That helps. That makes it more lathery, more foamy. Uh, you know, so nice and even all the way across and don't forget to get down up in there because down up in there is uh if you can't really see it with your eyes but it's still there so if the audio on this is bad i apologize i'm just shooting it with my phone like i said first time video for my kids because my kids want to be youtubers so they said dad you should do youtube i'm like ah i don't know i don't know dude Come on, Dad, you'd be good at it. I don't know, dude. So, finally, I decided to give it a try. So now I'm on the back side of Quadrant 2, sitting up on these shelves here. And I'm going to do the same, but I don't got to worry about it too, as, as hard, because I'm not trying to go too deep here. I went pretty deep on the last one. Let's see if I can get my camera back. And then just, y'all can, can see while the face focus. I think that's the trick, that's what I need to do. And don't forget, you gotta spray on these, like, you got these copper tubes that are going across, you spray those, because you want those to look nice and clean. I'm gonna get a damn camera stand, or whatever these big time YouTubers use, and get these videos. I better focus for y'all, so don't worry. All right, so we're gonna let that sit for a few minutes, and then while that's sitting, we can wash quadrant number three with the hot water. Because these drain pans right here, they have a natural uh, tilt, because the drain's over there on that side. See the drain right there? So when we have our bottom cover on, all the water goes down that way, out the drain, that way. So, when you're doing this and you got these buckets down here, water's gonna go into that bucket faster and more at a more of a rate than that one. So, I'm gonna take this bucket here, because I only got two of them, because I'm using their buckets. I'm gonna put it right over here, under this quadrant. But my ladder's in the way, so I'm gonna pull my ladder back. No, it's not my ladder, it's their ladder actually, so. Anyways. Uh, so. Oh, uh, my shoe fell off. Uh, that's gross. Don't let your shoe fall off, people. It's nasty. Okay, so that's what we've got going on. So I'm gonna set this trash can right about there. Right about there. Okay. Now the water in my hose has is not as hot as it would be if it would have been running. Or as hot as it would be coming out of the faucet. Because it's a 100 foot hose. And it's been sitting for like 15 minutes. So I'm going to flush the hose. So the, the purge the hose so we get nice hot water. Here on quadrant four, which is the last quadrant that needs to be rinsed. And I think you guys have got a pretty much general idea to how this goes, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys anyways. Got my hose on center, got my pan in place, both pans actually, and, the, and you know what? The water's gonna hit this ladder. Scoot this ladder over, there we go. Scoot the ladder over. And you gotta really be careful here. You gotta make sure you get your balance right, because you fall, 
let's just say it's going to hurt and it's not going to get better right away. Not if you're my age. Anyways, here we go. So I'm going to get up. Oh, let me put the camera back. It right there, like so. Yep. Right there. Okay. Ugh. Almost lost it there. Okay, now. Falling in my buckets, just as planned, and just kind of got to work, work this stuff out. Look at how nasty that water is. Oh yeah. I'm sorry, I'm trying to wiggle my hand with the hose and not the hand with uh, the camera. Water's more dirty coming out over there. So we just spray and try to work all this stuff down to the bottom of the pan so we can uh, roll off and out the drains. Kind of go at it from both angles here, from right to left and left to right. And then the chemical is going to pretty much help you extract the rest of it. Okay. Alright, we're now ready to throw some chemical on both quadrants three and four. Because I don't think I, yeah, I haven't done quadrant three and four yet. Or, yeah. Okay. So, let's see here. Yeah, so that's where the motors go. Motors go there, which I took those out. Um, I'll show you guys the uh, I'll show you guys the drain pan in the in the in a minute, which is a fan shroud. This right here is my bag. I love my bag. It's got a spotlight on it, but I'm charging the battery right now. My bag's pretty old. I can't think of who makes it. Those guys, CLC E Charge, about 150 bucks at United Refrigeration. I don't know how to leave links in the video description yet, but got my coral cleaner in it. Once I figure out how to leave links in the video description, um, I'll post that so you can find this uh, this wonderful stuff that I use. I'll post that so you can find it in there. Okay? Okay, so try not to waste y'all's time here because nobody likes boring footage, which is what I've been doing right now. All right, so here we are back on quadrant three my lens okay we're gonna apply this again this viper onto quadrant three and quadrant four let's see if I can make one can stretch across both of them because this coil really the, the the type of debris that's stuck to it is not really that bad. They get much worse. If you do this for a living, or if you can start doing this for a living, or even if you're doing it at your own restaurant, you'll notice that. Sometimes it's nasty. There's some that this coil cleaner does not do anything to. Uh, nothing at all. I've had some where hot water, the hottest of water, will not do anything to it grease buildup in kitchens that causes it. And it's absolutely disgusting. Alright, let's see if we can get how much we can get on quadrant four here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is good stuff right here. The inventor of this Viper, I mean I'm telling you. I use this stuff on everything, except those ones where it doesn't really work that well, um, which is the greasy stuff. I mean, this, I, I used to use the uh, oil cleaner to pump up. Oh, got a visitor. I'm going to have to come back in a minute. 
Because I don't want to tell them without them knowing, you know, throw my name for you. Then they see themselves, you know, that would be cool. Alright. So, I've applied this chemical both, and uh, I'll be back. I'm back, so I'm just going to go ahead and scrub all this, like I showed you guys a little bit ago. It's hard to keep the camera focused and move like I'm used to moving. Anyways, if you guys get the gist of it, I'm going uh, to get this side quadrant three and quadrant four rinsed. I'll come back to you guys in a little bit when we start to put it back together. So I'm going to cut out now. How it's going a little bit. Okay, so we are for the most part done with the rinsing. Turn the light on there. There we go. So, got it all rinsed. Got the whole whole thing rinsed. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take a that's just stains. It's hard to get that out unless you use a more powerful chemical, which we don't want to use on this because then we have to rinse it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some some of the rags they got here. Or you can use rags out of your truck, whatever. And I'm going to wipe it all down. Then we're going to clean the motors. Clean the fan blades, which see are filthy, McNasty. And then we've got the fan shroud, which is out here outside the door. We'll come back to that. Back. So, we're done rinsing the coil, um, except for the end pieces right there. Like we still gotta get that. But next we gotta do the fan shroud and um, the fan blades, and just brush off the motors or something like that. Um, so naturally, you gotta understand that while you're doing this, the walk-in cooler is off. So if you don't want all your cheeses, meats produce all that kind of stuff going bad if it's the kind that has the freezer in the back you can prop open the freezer like so the freezer door like so and allow the freezer air to come in here to help keep the product cool as long as big door stays closed for the most part so I thought I was gonna uh, you know rinse everything off took it outside and then I thought to myself you know what I need to get this floor clean first. Might as well clean the floor, that way it's clean while I'm doing that outside instead of it being dirty while I'm doing that outside. So, got my water hose and I got my squeegee. And I would film this, but I'm a one-man show, so I I'm not gonna be able to do that. So, I'm gonna get the floor clean and I'll be back. All right, my friends, we're back and continuing with the cleaning. So we're outside the restaurant now. Brought these nasty fan blades out here to clean them. Usually water will just do the trick. If you use a good enough high pressure of the water, it will do the trick on these fan shrouds. You want to be careful not to lose these little retaining nuts on this particular brand, which is a Bally, which is not commonly found in most restaurants that I've seen, but in this one it is. Uh, those, little, those little things there, they hold the screws to go in. So you want to use hot water. And you want to do this outside. And you want to not get your phone wet. That'd be a bad idea. Like I said, first video, so that's just the way it is. I guarantee you, I will become a better video maker or producer or whatever you call it. I don't think I'm doing too bad though for the first one. Nope. Alright, my damn water hose broke. Or my, not my nozzle. Have to get another one here pretty soon. But it still does. What it's supposed to do though. Alright, so we're just gonna go over things a little bit better with this uh, center, is what it's 
setting is. You blow out the drain. I don't know if there's anything in there. These drains, man, they get they get so nasty sometimes. But I don't think this one's too bad. Yeah, it's after years. They get clogged up and you cannot clear them. They're not like AC drains. They are tough. I guess from getting really, really cold. So many years of getting really, really cold. Yeah, see, I said the brand was Bally. Yeah, Bally. around the circle here. We're just about done with the fan shroud. And look at all that nastiness. All right, now we go to the blades. Wow. Just wow. Look at all that stuff, guys. Wow. Neglect. This coil has been neglected. I got called out on this one uh, yesterday, actually, uh, because it was not keeping below 40 degrees. Wonder why. Walked up on it and it was uh, frosting, wasn't completely frozen. Set up for four defrosts per day at 30 minutes each is what the defrost clock was set for. So, closes them a good old number to get it cleaned to do what I'm doing now, and he approved it right away. So, here we're doing it. I say we, because I'm with you guys, obviously. You want to get it nice and clean, so anyways, there's one. That's, that's about good enough, right there. Yeah, still got a little bit of crap on it, but that'll come off as we're putting it on. So, the, the actual fan blade cover, as you can see, is kind of nasty. And that's not just from the gunk that got sprayed on it just now. So you want to make it look really nice. You know, you don't want, you, you charge these people a lot of money, these businesses a lot of money. You want to keep their business. So you're going to do a good job, or they're not going to call you back. They're going to say, man, these guys are charging us all this money. And you can't even clean the damn grill. You know? Yeah, not up in here, not up in here. I take a lot of pride in my work. I might not be a very good cameraman, but lots of pride in my work. And I get home late sometimes as a result. And my family has to suffer the consequences of it, but I still get paid for it. And in a way it's suffering, but in a way we get money for it, so. All right, next. Moving right along. I think you guys get to just this. I'm gonna get this one washed, and I'm gonna come back when we're ready to reassemble. So we're back. We've got a clean fan shroud, or a drain pan fan shroud, whatever. Clean grills, well, mostly clean, and clean fan blades, two of them. Got a clean machine, and we still have yet to clean our motors, but we will do that. Uh, so. The way this fan shroud goes on, with these two holes, it hooks on, there's hinges over here, I'm going to get a close up on them. It slides down from that away, slides down and it hangs like a door, and that's how, uh, that's how it comes down. So if you want to completely take it off, you got to take, you got to loosen the hinges. So I did that already. I can't show you the process of taking it off, but I can show you the process of putting it back on, which is, if you can't figure that out, well, I don't know. So, I'm going to get the ladder set up, be right back. So I want to show you guys, this is all the hardware that holds everything together that I took off of the, that came off as I was taking it apart. These here go for the hinges, and so you got two of those, so anyways, three of those fell bounced around down there to never be found again. So, I got these as a substitute. I got a whole bunch of different little sizes, nuts and bolts everywhere in my truck. I got all kinds of stuff in my truck stock. I highly recommend having as much truck stock, whatever crap at the supply house that you see that you think you'll never use, believe me, you will use it. So, 
these are those hinges. Oh, hey, there went some screw. Yep, I think I like mine better though. These are the hinges that are gonna hold it. Got one there, one over there. So, I'm not gonna be able to film and put these up. So, I'm gonna put them up and then I'll come back when the door is hanging. Or not the door, when it's hanging like a door. Yeah, I like that. You guys, this is an important piece of information. These hinge style right here, the only way to get these in is to put them in as a pair and let them hang down both sides. And then you put the door up and carefully line up the holes. And put the doors on there, the door on there, and uh, let it hang. Or don't let it hang. You gotta hold it all up and put the nuts on. Otherwise, it'll never work. Once you're once your uh, fan shroud is on, instead of letting it hang like a door, you gotta come to the other side and you gotta make it pop, pop up into place. So, you just uh, pop it into place. Or how about that? It all popped into place. And you take these screws here. Use them. So, one of the last things to do is I don't care if these are encased, completely encased, and not vented, I am not going to get them wet. So, to clean them, we're going to take this little brush that we used earlier, kind of clean it off some, and we're just going to brush it. Brush it clean. Get all this big junk off of it at least. So that it looks good, even though nobody can see it. And let's see, these motors and these whole motors with their assemblies, they can come off either before or after you put the main bottom cover on. But if you want to make it easier on yourself, you'll take the fan blade off first. Fan blade and the fan shroud. Or fit not fan shroud, the, the grill, the white things that we rinsed a little bit ago. You'll take those off first. Motors and brackets are small, so they will fit through those holes on the bra on the drain pan either way. So that's the order that we do it in. Reverse order of putting it in, installing it, which these are gonna go up there next. One goes there, one goes there. Doesn't matter which one. You've got this little little three three-way pr plug there that you can only insert one way into that little black plug right there in, in the middle of that hole so, so and they got four screws they hold them in the corners so I'll mount those and we will come back briefly so this one's already in now in order to put these on you've got to obviously hold it up with one hand and put the plug together with your other one it's doable, it's not hard. Um, it's important to note, on this unit, there is a switch right here. It is a light switch, and it kills power to these fan motors. You have to turn that off before you go around screwing with this. Now you gotta do it anyways, because the fan blades are gonna be running, so you can't, obviously can't turn it off, or start, I mean, take it apart while the fan blades are spinning, but turn off the switch, the fans stop, if it's a 115 volt unit, which this one is, see right there, 115 volt, yep. If the fans stop, that means power's off to them. So, just wanted to go over that with you. So get the plug in, then you put the four screws in, and then uh, I'll come back with the blade. With both motors in, we're ready to put our blades back on. Now these blades here take, uh, if you look at the hubs of them, you want to be careful with these blades. When you're moving them around, if one of these wings bends, which they look bent, but they're not. These these are perfect. But if one of them bends, it's going to cause a wobble and unbalance, and it'll eventually kill the motor. If it's bad enough, it'll vibrate the whole thing. It'll be noisy too. But these particular hubs take an eighth inch Allen. I'm starting to run out of space. Anyways, one inch, eight, I mean eighth of an inch Allen goes right up there. When you're doing this and you're putting them back on, if you look on the shaft, you'll see right there, 
that's where the set screw was originally that's where you want to put it. it the blade needs to be where it was so I'm gonna do that we'll be back because I'm running out of space be right back in these make sure you tighten them I mean you gotta use both hands hold the blade with one hand and tighten it tighten it good otherwise it'll slide off all right now we're ready to go back where we got both blades in ready to go back with our white covers and then I'm also going to reassemble the drain right there which is held on by that little nut and then we will be ready to start it back up and that's going to be it okay so wrapping things up here we've got everything together got the fan shrouds on and got the drain put together we're going to flip the switch on here well first we're going to make sure that our defrost time clock is set to the current time yeah, looks like it got a little wet too yeah shouldn't hurt nothing it should be all right um and let's see defrost time clock is close enough so we're gonna leave it the way i had it at the um six defrosts per day at 22 minutes each yep all right we're gonna leave it like that close it and we're gonna flip the switch and we're gonna see what happens there we go And we have got some love. Cold air coming out the side. Oh yeah. So, I gotta tell you. I'm gonna have to go over this at the beginning. Um, this is not a how-to video. It looks easy the way I do it because it is easy for me, but I'm a professional. I do this every day. I've been doing it for 15, 16 years now. Um, if you are at all unsure about your ability to do anything that I've described in this video, don't do it. Hire a professional. You need to have a moderate to significant amount of knowledge in electrical, basic mechanical work, um, even plumbing. You can get hurt real bad doing this. You're on a ladder, everything is slippery. Um, do it at your own risk. Uh, but. You can save a lot of money if uh, if you do it. So that's what this video is for—to help y'all out, uh, whether it be business owners or other technicians just learning. Um, these are the tools I used. That's all I needed, and of course a ladder, which they had here at the restaurant. Five sixteenth, three eighths, three eighths. 8 inch Allen, a pipe wrench for the drain, which you might need a second one if you have to back up the other part of the drain. You might need a large crescent wrench, a flathead to pry sheet metal, a brush, some of these to cut wire uh, cables, ties, or whatever, you know. Real simple stuff. Not a big deal. So, that's going to wrap it up, you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like, please give me a good thumbs up, like that. Um, subscribe. This is my first video. I'd like to do more. This video is, uh, this video is for my kids. Love you guys. Out.